I'm Kathleen Choi, a Korean chef now living in the U.S. My passion is creating healthy and delicious foods using some of my favorite Korean ingredients. Join me in learning about Korean foods, ingredients, and culture. Next on Kathleen's Korean Kitchen. Today I'll be making ho yang shik, which is considered as medicinal food in Korea. Miyokguk, seaweed soup, packed with protein, calcium, and iron. Next, delicious and aromatic chicken noodle soup, made with herbal ginseng root and dried dates. And Italian fusion miyok barley risotto, inspired from traditional Korean porridge. For thousands of years, food has been regarded as medicine in Korea. We believe that food is the main source of energy that affects our mind and body, and that we are what we eat. In today's program, we'll explore Ho Yang Shik, medicinal foods, and why we consume these foods at certain times of the year. Ho Yang Shik is a specialty food prepared and eaten for medicinal purposes especially during the hottest 30-day period in the lunar calendar called Sambo. It is because eating hot foods during summer is believed to restore ki or chi. In Korean cuisine, the colors of natural foods are associated with certain organs in the body and is said to restore one's health or act as a remedy. For instance, green foods like lettuce is good for the liver and gallbladder. Red peppers promotes the heart and small intestines. Yellow squash aids digestion of the stomach. White colored foods for the lungs and large intestines. And black foods are good for the kidneys and bladder. Seaweed is rich in vitamin B that is essential for boosting metabolism and calcium for centuries. Korean women have been consuming seaweed soup several times a day after giving birth. This is to restore the womb and replenish their bodies with abundance of nutrition for a speedy recovery. It is also customary to prepare and serve seaweed soup during one's birthday. Korean ginseng or insam is considered to be one of the healthiest substances in the world. For thousands of years, Chinese and Koreans have been trying to prove and demystify the health benefits of insam through medicine. It is a natural elixir known to control high blood pressure, help with diabetes, and senility in elderly people. In Korea, samgyetang, ginseng chicken soup, is mainly consumed during the hottest time in summer because insam provides energy and helps boost the immune system. Samgyetang is made by stuffing chestnuts, ginseng root, dried dates, garlic, and glutinous rice inside a small pan and boiled in a clay pot. The first recipe I'm about to share with you has been one of my favorite things to eat all throughout the year. Miyokgu, which means seaweed soup in Korean. So first we need to soak the dried seaweed in a bowl of warm water. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes for the seaweed to swell up. It looks like this. You can see the seaweed has been fully hydrated in the water. And since it comes from a package, you want to rinse the seaweed in running water a few times just to make sure they're clean. And typically the broth is made from beef or pork bones. But I usually flavor mine with seafood and today I've prepared some mussels, tuna and anchovy sea kelp base. You would think it would be too fishy but it's quite the contrary. The seaweed is very mild and the seafood gives the broth a surprisingly refreshing flavor. All I'm going to do is just chop them up in small pieces so it's easier to eat. Growing up, my mom used to make seaweed soup on everyone's birthdays and I always looked forward to it. Not only because it was a special thing to eat on birthdays, 
but I actually love the taste of seaweed, especially the broth. As in most Korean soups, it's always important to pan fry the ingredients in a little oil before adding the liquid. So I'll drizzle a teaspoon of olive oil. And I always like to mix a little bit of sesame oil, half and half together. It tastes a lot better. Now when it heats up, we'll add the seaweed. So in the meantime, I have some peeled garlic cloves. And to this, I'm going to add some salt and pepper. We'll pan fry the seaweed for about a minute or so. Mmm, it smells like the ocean in here. I love it. I remember when I was 12 years old, my mom, you know, I asked her, why do we eat seaweed soup on our birthdays? And she told me it's to remind us of what she had to go through to bring us out into the world. Maybe that's why I like it so much more. Add eight cups of water, about 40 ounces. And a quarter cup of anchovy sea kelp broth that I had previously made. Just to give a little bit of a salty flavor, I'm going to add a tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. I'm going to let it steep and simmer in low heat for about 15 minutes to get the flavor and color. I have to say, Koreans are extremely self-conscious about our health, probably more so than most cultures. And we consider prevention to be more important than the cure itself. It's already boiling, so to this I'll add the mussels and tuna. Simmer for additional 3-4 minutes. The soup's done. Turn the heat off. Mm, it smells really good. It's fast to whip up, yummy and nutritious. You can always adjust the salty flavor by adding some more low sodium soy sauce or sea salt right before you have the soup. In my case, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of chopped green onion. Mmm, yum! I can eat seaweed soup practically every day. The broth is very mild and refreshing. If you never tried seaweed or don't like the taste of it, well, I hope you will change your mind after trying out today's New York Cook recipe. My next recipe is inspired from a very popular Korean dish called Sanggyetang, chicken ginseng soup. I'm going to start off by cutting up the vegetables I've prepared here, starting with a brown onion. Next, the carrots and the celery. A little bit of garlic. They're going to enhance the flavor of the soup very nicely and complement the earthy and aromatic ginseng herb. Speaking of ginseng, here I have a couple of pieces of ginseng roots. The name ginseng comes from a Chinese character called insam, and it means root in the form of a human body. It has a head, a torso, actually arms and legs. So this one's missing an arm. For most people, trying it for the first time, the flavor may come off a little bit too strong. So I'm going to chop it up in small pieces. Oh, the smell, the aroma of the ginseng. Wow, it's really good. And as for the dates, they're going to give a really nice sweet flavor and aroma to the broth. And I'm just going to throw them in the pot as is. Instead of using the regular potato, 
this is a lot healthier version. So, and it will also sweeten up the broth. I'm going to cut them in small cubes. And as always, it's best to handle the meat last. First, we'll need some olive oil, half a tablespoon. To this, I'm going to add the crushed garlic cloves. I'm actually using the stone pot or skillet. It really speeds up the process of cooking the food. To this, I'll throw in the vegetables that I've cut up. It's all about the colors too. I have about 40 ounces of water, about approximately eight cups. Just gonna throw some dried dates in there and we'll let it simmer. It needs some salt, so I'm going to put, let's start with about a teaspoon. Sprinkle some fresh basil. Let's check in with Woody, the liquid chef. I can't imagine what he's going to do with one of today's ingredients, seaweed. All right, guys, Kathleen's given me a real left-wing ingredient to come up with for a cocktail. It's actually seaweed. So we've got miyok, uh, mi yummy, but miyok is over here, which is, uh, I, I can't really imagine that it's really beautiful, healthy seaweed. And this one over here is just called kim. So get any one you like. Uh, I've made a bitters. So to make the bitters, I've cooked uh, the kim, uh, ingredient here of the seaweed with some mandarin leaves, some orange peel, some cinnamon and cloves, and water. And essentially I simmered that for about two hours and then let it sit. Now that makes quite a bitter but slightly salty bitters, which I'm going to make into a Sazerac. I don't know what to call this drink. I was going to call it like a seaweed Sazerac, but now I think it's going to be called a Korean in New York. So the traditional way of making a Sazerac is to use a herbsinth or an absinthe to rinse your glass with first. So I found this here, it's called Dodok. I think it's good, it was Dodok. Uh, it's a herbal mountain uh, rice wine. So what we do is we take this and you have, to, you have to shake it up to get that. And we wanna just, and she goes around the edges like so. And that really is just all we do with it. Take it out like that. And then mixing glasses or mixing glass. We take bourbon, we usually use rye whiskey. So in this case, we're gonna use Maker's Mark because it is a very sweet bourbon and we're gonna need at least two ounces for each, two and a half ounces for each one. We do need to sweeten the ingredients. Look at me, I'm a bit destructive today. So a little bit of sugar, like maybe one and a half teaspoons per, per, per drink. And then slowly we just add this Kim Crazy Bitters to it. And not a lot, not a lot at all. So stirring the cocktail, it's not a lot to it. It's really just getting it cold without shaking it and making it all opaque. We need a garnish. Traditional garnish is an orange wine, but I'm going all out and going for the mandarin zest. So take one of these off all the way down like that. Give it some time. One of these, and you have a seaweed Sazerac, made Korean style, of course. And this is a, sort of a late night drink in my book. Real traditional kind of cocktail, uh, but done in a very Korean kind of happy way. And uh, cheers, Kathleen.
Wow, it's just beautiful. Really fresh, little herbal. Yeah, I like it. All yours, cheers. Woody, your drink recipes are getting pretty exotic. I agree, we should call it Seaweed Cesarac since it has a nice ring to it. So my next recipe is seaweed risotto inspired from chuk or Korean rice porridge which my mom used to make for me growing up. I remember the times when I was sick and lost my appetite or when I had a bad tummy. She would make me plain rice porridge and mix it with an egg, soy sauce, sesame oil and roasted seaweed. So since barley takes a lot longer to cook, I have pre-soaked a cup of barley in water for about an hour which will help reduce the cooking time. Instead of using the hydrated seaweed, I've prepared some roasted ham, which will add a really great flavor to the risotto. The only thing I'm going to chop up is some sesame leaves and some fresh parsley here. Roll up a few pieces of sesame leaves and cut them up in a chiffonade. And then some parsley. Not only because I love the aromatic herbal flavor and nutrients it delivers, but the bright green flecks also counterbalances the dark brownish green seaweed. So it makes the risotto look more appetizing. That's all the slicing and dicing I'm doing because I have pre-chopped some onion, green onion, and red bell pepper, which will add a really nice vibrant color to the risotto. For today's risotto, I'm using a traditional stone pot and it heats up pretty fast. I'll just add a tablespoon of olive oil and no butter. And once it heats up, then we'll add the chopped onion with a pinch of salt and pepper. Now it's time to add the soaked barley. So scoop up some of this barley once it starts cooking it's going to double in size again so I don't want to add too much as you can see the barley and the onion it's getting a nice sheen so now it's time to add some cooking wine which I'm using herbal ginseng wine I have about two ounces here So we'll add some anchovy sea kelp broth that I've prepared here. Then we'll let it come to a boil again before we add more liquid. And when the barley becomes tender, I'm going to add the shrimp. As you can see, they're peeled and deveined already. A little over a dozen pieces. I love shrimp for my risotto. We'll let it cook for a couple of minutes before we remove it from the heat. And then add the other ingredients. And the shrimp's cooked. You don't want to overcook it, otherwise it will be too chewy. So we'll turn the heat up. And to this, I'll add some lemon zest. So the lemon will also help eliminate the fishy scent from the shrimp and squeeze in some juice in it too. Grate some fresh block of Parmesan cheese. Love it. Beautiful. Look for a little bit of added color. I've chopped up some beautiful red bell peppers. Oh, that's just perfect. A couple more ingredients. To go in here, some chopped green onion. It's always good for any soups, stews, and porridges. Some roasted kim. Just use my hands to crush them in there. And then some roasted pine nuts. It's got a lot of vitamins and good fats. Throw in the chopped parsley. 
some green. See all the colors in here? Hmm, beautiful. There you go. The only thing I'm going to sprinkle are some chopped sesame leaves. And if you love cheese like I do, a little bit more Parmesan cheese. Just grate it right on top. There you go. Mm. It's a perfect marriage of seaweed, shrimp, and the creamy risotto. The pine nuts give it a nice earthy crunch, and of course the lemon gives it a kick of acidity to counterbalance the creaminess of the risotto. I can guarantee you're gonna love this dish. Now it's time to see what Dr. Dia has to say about the health and nutritional benefits of today's ingredients. Yarn matey, Captain Dia here with a treasure from the high seas, seaweed. Seaweed is prevalent in Asian cooking and is featured in many Asian dishes, symbolizing wealth and prosperity when served for Chinese New Year. High in iodine, it can treat hypothyroid disorders, as well as lower cholesterol, high blood sugar, and high blood pressure. And if you're a new mother, certain kinds of seaweed can also help you to regain your wench-like figure. Ahoy! Well, my final word of advice to you is Eat what you know, not just what you like. Because I think it's important that we are aware of the health benefits and functional aspects of foods that we consume every day. I hope you enjoyed today's recipes. And until next time, stay healthy. And remember, life is delicious, so taste it.